right, so we're back, and, and I'm just enjoying our talk so much. Um, I would love, we were talking about a minute ago, We Three Goblins, and which is an elementary tree, and I'd love to show it to you really fast. I had a request to write more uh, trios, you know, three kids at one piano, or if you're in a group setting, you each one can have their own piano, but um, I find this a really intriguing uh, concept. Uh, I haven't done this very often. So I wrote a trio, and of course it's for Halloween, so kids are going to really have fun with this. It's got an infectious melody. This is a score for the for the teachers where you can see what's happening, but then I give you some options because it, it's a lot of ways. It's kind of like at the gym. You can, you can just start at the beginning, and then here's the primo. Everything is written right around middle C, so the, the, the notes are easy to read. Um, Right here, I'm telling you, let's play this two octaves higher. But these are all notes that you already know. Um, when we get to secundo, they're actually the ones in the middle of the piano. So they're going to just stay in these notes. And then when you get to the uh, the terzo, the third part, they're going to be an octave lower. So that's really your bass line. But it's still, um, this one, yeah, it does go between the hands, but they're all the same notes. They get to play the melody. Everybody gets to play the different parts. But what I thought was interesting, going back to at the gym, was what if we had like a cliff notes or a, you know, just a quick sheet you could introduce only one part at a time. Well, here's an introduction. We need that, but Everybody can play that. But then if you just wanted to play the melody, we've got it right here. And you could just play that three times. You know, just I, I, yesterday I started teaching this to two sisters. One sister is in the sixth grade and the other one's in the third grade. So the third grader, this is going to be all she can handle. But, but we learned it together and the sixth grader, you know, will quickly move on to other things. And so we've got a counter melody, which... It's kind of interesting because it's mostly left hand, but those are the notes I needed, but we're going to be two octaves higher. So it's, you know, it's, it's a little higher. Then we have a bass line. And then after you've played these three times, however you choose to do that, we've got a little ending. Well, let's let, you know, part one go first and then let part two go and then let part. But if you notice, it's the same thing three times. Right. So you could play all, all in different three. spots. So it's yes. Like yes. So you get to do, you know, whatever you want to do. And then everybody gets to buy bum, 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 at the end. So that's I'm, a really interesting way to lay it out. Um, yeah. Cause I know I've taught trios before and I've tried where I give everybody the score and that's overwhelming. <laughs> And I've tried where I give everybody just their part, but then they're not as aware of what's going on around them. Right. Um, but where you have this this format where you've got part one and part two and part three, and they show their function, mm -hmm. and they understand that they can play any combination of those parts on each cycle. Right. They know, they can hear that maybe the person next to them is also doing the melody because they both chose to do the melody on the same path. Yeah. but they can also hear when their person next to them is doing something that's not the same. And that awareness is really important when you're doing an ensemble, but also an appreciation of who has the melody. Hey, right. are you playing the bass line or are you playing the melody? Because we should hear the melody a little bit more than the bass line. And it, it teaches function, not just primo secondo terzo, because you can give the melody to each part, Yes. but it's important to recognize when you have the melody or when someone else does. And yeah. I like that's a very different way to lay out a trio um the study sheet that you have here and uh -huh. i think it it gives everybody just a little bit more of a focus because it um can you scroll back up to one of the primo secondo or terzo parts where it's all yeah on one page? yeah so this is there everybody gets two pages so this is the four page bar one. Intro, and then like four bar intro and then they have right right yes exactly those parts yes the first two lines are or the baseline yeah. And then this, these two lines are the counter melody. Right. And then, then they get the melody. And, and that's, then a, we... that's a good way to discuss too, because that it, it helps them um, sight read and see the form. Right. Right. It gives them vocabulary to chunk their big part into little pieces. That's just a really different way of presenting a trio piece. And that's, I haven't seen anything quite like that. Well, that's because I've never taught a trio before. <laughs> Well, then we just needed you to give it a try because there's trios out there that are not written this way, but they're all, I don't know, the, the, tri the trios that I've seen are either written um, as a score or yeah. they're written as um, three separate parts like you have here. 
but uh, there's no explanation where the melody is or where the bass line is. And as teachers, we can inspect the music and, and see, oh, so they have the part, they have the melody here, but then it moves over here and it moves over here. And we can see that. But the students don't really appreciate that until they've played through the piece a few times. Exactly. And then they can, we can start to talk about it. But it's really good to be able to have that conversation first. Yeah. And everybody wants to play the melody anyway. So let them all learn the melody. Then well, let them experience the other parts. <laughs> what, what my idea is, is we're having a Halloween recital and I'm going to have three keyboards and I'm teaching this to every one of my students and whoever is brave enough, it's going to be the finale. And I'm going to say, okay, who wants to play We Three Goblins? And they have to run up to a piano and play it. And so <laughs> the, the music will be there and hopefully they'll have it memorized by then because we'll be doing it about two months worth but you know some of the littles they can just play the melody three times you know and, and i'm gonna have a backing track right. and they'll just play along whatever part they want to do it you know and well, i just I'm, I'm looking at this too and thinking how can i work this into my groups um as like a sight reading warm-up yeah like you could give you could give your your whole class the melody to study one week and mm -hmm. they all learn the melody and we all hone the melody and we talk about the the subtleties of it and how to get all that articulation out and and mm -hmm. um you know i can play the other parts so we can get some of that contrast but everybody's learning the melody and that's week one week right. two we're going to study the counter melody so they know what the melody sounds like and then we can all look at the counter melody and go boy this is going to contrast with it because these are longer fuller notes and right. they're gonna they're gonna present a nice opposite end yeah. so they all learn to play the counter melody and how to listen for it but then i'll be playing the melody and they get that cross and then the next week we learn the bass part and everybody's now really down low and they learn how to balance because you don't want the bass part to be loud. So they have right. to play more carefully. And then the week after that, you have them pick a part. They all, they know all the parts, they get to mix it up. And maybe even the week after that, you hand them the primo part and say, find right. which parts you have to play in what order. And then we can put it all together in a more structured way. Or you can just leave it on the previous step, like everybody's just doing their own thing. Right. Just play that. Yeah. It doesn't need to be more than that. But I, I'm seeing like you could really easily introduce little chunks in this format. Yes. I think in my experience, when we do ensembles, it's always tough to know how to break up a big ensemble part and keep everybody learning productively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, And I, in the past, I've just said, you know, we're just going to do this measure to this measure for this week. Everybody's learning their parts separately, but we're all playing together and we're just going to bring this piece together one chunk at a time right. in a relatively chronological order. <laughs> right. But this is a very different approach where you tackle the function of the different parts and everybody learns all the parts, which is really, I think, the best way to participate in an ensemble. If you can all play all the parts, you'll all appreciate what it is that you're putting together when you yeah. all team up and everybody's doing something different. And you can enjoy the the sound you're creating and not just go, all right, I need to focus on my part, like try to tune the rest out and just like, what am I playing? Because <laughs> that's sometimes what can happen too in an ensemble is everybody's like, well, there's too much going on around me. So I'm just going to like, la, 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 and just try to do my own part. <laughs> oh my this God. really takes it from the other side and goes, we all need to be listening for these three things. Because yes. That's all these parts together. So, ah, my brain's turning with ideas. I love the format though. The format's so different and it's so approachable. Well, fantastic. It needs to be bite-sized and it needs to be creative and it's got all of that. Well, I, I want to play the backing track for you. The backing track is it's actually a folder, so you can hear all the parts at once or you can hear just the background parts. It still has the melody, but just not with the piano sound. And then I have a primo focus one, so if you need to send that home and let the kids who play, you know, everybody has their own part. But yeah. I, was, I was telling you a minute ago that uh, my backing track has clarinet, accordion um it has uh tuba and banjo and a marimba in there too because i didn't want to use a flute anyway I, i'm gonna yeah. can you hear that yeah it's sneaking around <laughs> i love halloween music Do you hear the counter my The tuba has the melody. Now 
this actually is the beginning again, just as a little tag before the ending. Your ending. Together. I love it. It's adorable. It's oh, thank I mean, you. It's so cheeky. It's it's got all the best parts of Halloween music, I think. And there's, um, I'm looking at the sheet music and thinking, boy, you know, I would love for all of my my students to try this, but I know that those accidentals are going to be a, a discussion point. And, um, but everything's, like you said, it's in a very playable range. It doesn't mm -hmm. move around a lot, but mm -hmm. as you hear all these parts weaving together, it sounds a lot harder than it is. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. I actually really want to try that now as I'm thinking about how to how to plan the lessons. I haven't done my Halloween homework yet. I need to figure out what, what it is we're going to learn for Halloween this year. And usually it even just, it just escapes me. I'm just too preoccupied with the start of the school year to even get to Halloween. And I'm like, oh, Halloween's next week. Are we doing anything? No, I don't think we got time to plan anything. It's like, psh, we're just going to focus on Christmas. Um, we, yeah, this is, I, this is perfect timing. <laughs> well, I, I never did Halloween recitals until like three years ago and and I saw my teacher friends on Facebook doing it how much fun the kids love it now we do it and every year the kids want to do it they that's the highlight of the year they wear costumes we have it at the little park here in our neighborhood and so people can walk to the pavilion you know and sit out on lawn chairs and they bring candy to share and they bring their friends oh it is just a blast so I, I would it. trade it yeah well I'll make sure you have this one I really would love it. I, I want to, I want to dabble with that. And just to, um, again, the format is so different and accessible. And, um, as a composer, this is where I really appreciate your compositional take on this is mm -hmm. that every part weaves together yes. and you're really just doing three passes of the same progression with everybody yeah. taking a different thing on each pass. And I think that's, that's really important to give everyone a few passes of the same thing they can they can just stay on the same thing if you want to right or you can move around but it all yeah. fits fits together and um for the students that want it to be easier maybe they stay on whatever part is easiest for them to play and right. for students that want to challenge they can keep moving around and mixing it up trying out different octaves and like yeah there's just a lot of ways you can take that and be flexible so i think that's uh, i love the possibilities fantastic well so we need to wrap this up it's been a crazy enjoyable time with you. You are so smart. I want to collaborate with you more. I've got ideas. You've got ideas. I think we need to put some things together. I think Absolutely. I'm all in on that. I definitely want to, I, I'm already enjoying the things I've tried from your, your uh, library of yes. composing and arranging. And I'm, I'm very excited to keep dabbling in it because there's, yeah. there's just so many ways it can go. And, um, yeah. There's, I appreciate it's, that. It's going to be plenty to work on for a while. <laughs> well, it's, it's folks like you that get me inspired and excited to keep working and making more because, um, you know, I, I get these crazy ideas, but if there's no one to implement it or no one to take it and run with it, 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 it it's not as special. I like, uh, you just made me so happy and excited to keep going. So I appreciate that so much. Oh, I'm so happy we were able to connect then. This has been yeah. really fun. Yeah, thanks. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, but uh, thanks for being my first um, guest on Teacher Talk. I hope there's another one, but if it wasn't, this was fantastic and I really enjoyed it. First one's over. Now we get to go on to the next one and, and yeah. uh, hopefully hear from more teachers. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.